Hey guys, saw that over at UJ Kwan that they're doing a top five knife video, which he got from Kevin Cleary, those uh, church boys over there. <laughs> so I wanted to do a top five of my own collection and, and each five is going to be a different category and then I'll go through the logic of why. Why well, I think these are my top five if I had to choose and luckily we don't have to choose um, because it sucks <laughs> but uh, it's a fun it's a fun exercise to try to because um, it just kind of gives you some logic about maybe your knife collection so uh, let's start all way from the left side and um, and the way I have it is I have it kind of like a runner up or the kind of two I, I consider on this category. So the first category I would consider for top five would be um, the best user or best abuser. And what we have here is uh, the Cold Steel Roger 2. I mean, the sucker's a beast. I have the camera like set back as far as possible and usually like farther than normal just so... Uh, I can fit more knives into the shot and this barely fits. Look at this thing. So this one is the winner for it and the runner up is uh, would be the Formax. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, Formax is like something that really touches me um, emotionally, I guess. You have that thick, thick stock and it feels indestructible and uh, it's like a weight hanging some incredible amount it's pretty much the strongest folder out there uh production folder so you know using the triad lock it's it just the sucker is a beast i've used it in the field and i have edc it's quite heavy at 10 ounce but um between the two between the formax and the raja 2 um it's the raja 2 can is it cannot be touched even though it's like a hundred dollar knife. It's probably one of the best sellers, one of uh, Coastal's best sellers. It's just, um, um, it's just so useful. It's a useful uh, knife. You can, wow, exposure is all over the place. Sorry. So um, yeah, um, you can choke up. You have a different grip, so you can choke up here and do some like feather sticking, etc. And then here's some more control, maybe. You want to do some light chopping and have more control and then you can just go all the way to the back and just chop away and um i used to carry some fixed blades but the fixed blades you know i tested uh have a um line steel m7 it's a seven inch fixed blade and it's just it's a monster it's like an indestructible and i did a chop test between that and this and i believe this is lighter overall with the uh, it doesn't have to you, you obviously you don't have to use a sheath and um, they actually perform equal in the chop test. So what I had was this knife that can do trail clearing for uh, veggies. <laughs> that would say like jungle, jungle territory through the veggie stuff. Um, so it can, it's light enough to go through those stuff and it can chop and it's discreet in your back pocket. This goes in my back pocket. So you know, if somebody, I would say like it's kind of gray area to where I'm doing some exploring. It's, um, you're definitely not supposed to be chopping through the vegetation, but you know, when you're in a trop, when you're in a tropical environment, all that stuff grows back in like a week or two. So it doesn't matter. It's not like, I don't feel like morally, uh, weighted on that. So, but yeah, this has been used a lot. And, um, my only complaint would be the the steel is CTS um, BD1 is just um, just okay. It's not enough to, to make it through one field view, so you would have to carry a field, a field sharpener. So I wish they upgraded that, but yeah, just abuser. I have tried to break one of these before and like just smash it into like a wood and just like pull it sideways and different stuff like that. And all it did is was lo loosen the pivot, and I never, you know, after I never got it to um, break. And um, it's a it's really an awesome design. I mean, some people probably just carry this for for funs for novelty, but it's actually a very functional uh, knife. So field use, user user kind of knife definitely beats out the Formax. The Formax I know they designed it to be more useful when they did the blade design. They didn't go like bonkers on the 
blade stock and um, it just doesn't f function. It's, you won't be able to chop. You can do just some light work. It can be a nice backup knife, but you're not going to do any. You're not going to. It can't do everything as much as a, as the Roger 2. So that's the first will be. Yeah, let me just leave that here. That would be the Roger 2. And then next category would be best action. And what we have here is a Shirogorov um, Neon. And uh, this sucker is, in my opinion, probably like a the perfect EDC. It's the perfect. The only thing it's not perfect is the price. It's 550 bucks for S30V, which is S30V. I mean, it's notorious for chipping. It does chip. That's it. It's notorious for chipping, and I have chipping issues with uh, my Benchmade S30V, so whatever. Those microchips, not like very heavy, so you're not going to like do some going through wood or anything like that with this, but this is like most EDC, you're just going to go through cardboard and and through uh, different, uh, and paper. And uh, so, but look at this action, seriously. The blade is not even that big, and it drops like nothing. And when you have it locked up, it's there's absolutely zero play, completely solid. And you probably can find some of the videos where they have this on the floor, like propped up, and the guy's stepping on it. It's really, um, it's really a phenomenal knife. And it's the only knife I that owned that came 100% perfect, perfect edge, everything milled out perfectly. My only issues, of course, there's issues with it, is that it feels slippery the scale it does and um it's probably easy to mark up i already marked it up here i don't know when or how but it's easy to mark up and um the design is a little bit boring so it actually came in runner up compared to sabenza all right so chris reeve sabenza uh this is sabenza 25 which is similar to the Inkosi. Um, this is the one with the CF, uh, the CF uh, inlays, and this is what was a uh, Blade H HQ exclusive, I think. So what I like about this knife is it's also a near. It's not 100% perfect, but it came near perfect. You, a lot of Chris Reeve is. Um, you got 99.99999% perfect. They're famous for their their tolerances, and you can just buy the knife and not worry. So nice uh, kind of hollow grind, or they have their own kind of version of hollow grind, and it's just a good slicer. The action, I love the action, and I'm very specifically talking about the um, Inkosi or the Sebenza 25 that has a ceramic ball. The ceramic ball interfaces with the, with the blade, so you're never going to get lock stick, and you're never, it's never going to, I don't think it's going to travel over more than necessary, so... What I love about it is that as soon as you start pulling, you see it, it's already starting moving. There's a really a direct feel, and then it drops. So what you have is a knife that can shoot out, it can drop, no problem. Free dropping, it's, it's not ha this hasn't been even greased for a long time. The, the looks are nice. Um, so we have phenomenal action, and I love that direct feel of the ceramic ball on the, on the, on the blade. For me, it's like, the only thing I can compare it to is like a driving and like a manual transmission where you feel like you're connected to the car as opposed to an automatic. So this is like the feel, the action, you know, blade performance. This thing is um, really good. And this, even though this kind of clip is so boring, it's so ugly, it is so functionable. It, you know, it's not going to tear up your clothes and it's easy to get in and out and it's going to hold. It's, it's kind of remind me of like a Spyderco wire clip. It's like also an ugly, very functionable um, clip. So that is the Sebenza coming in at, as my second knife. And the Sebenza is, um, and this will be like best, uh, this will be my uh, best action category. Okay, what we have coming up. I wasn't sure I was going to do this, but I decided to do this category, which is best food, which is kind of, I don't know. You, we find excuses to buy any kind of knife. And then so I have um, two different knives. And probably I just picked one over the other based on the, surely on the price or looks. Um, uh, Openel, great knife, just like a Mora. I don't have a Mora inside my top five, but it's a knife that everybody should own. Either just, even a more basic, and you can just use it as a, 
just to um, trash it, complete trash it. And it's a phenomenal. See, now I went off track. The more basic is functions phenomenally for bushcraft duties and it's quite indestructible. So it's like a knife I recommend also, a very cheap knife. So open up a nice cheap knife. It's very famous French knife. And um, yeah, for a food knife, it has stainless steel. Um, this kind of viral lock locks it in. And also when you close it, it'll lock it as well. And that's nice. And you don't want it so the kids don't get freaked out. But it's a two. It's definitely a two-hander. If you can one-hand it, wow. It's like I... I think there's some kind of technique where you kind of grab this and then you just maybe rub against your leg or something like that. I don't know. But this, I'd rather two-hand it. And uh, I got the, the wine one, so it's less, it freaks people out less, right? Because if you have like a knife that's big, if you're using it in the restaurant, you're going out and you hate their knives and they're always like just cutting with, it's like a, with a butter knife. And uh, yeah, you can bring your own knife to a, a restaurant. It's nice. And then... So I don't drink wine. I'm more of a whiskey drinker. And um, But you see this wine opener and less likely to um, freak people out. And uh, nice picnic knife. Nice restaurant knife. Very cheap. But uh, I can't. Of course, I cannot win over this. This thing, this thing is one of my sort of grail knife that when I first started in, in knife collecting uh, or collecting. I, I don't really collect. I use all my knives. And... Um, yeah, it was three years ago, and I love this guy's design. I love the minimalist and how sim the simplicity of it has uh, this glow resin in the back. It's amazing, and this you know high polished uh, carbon fiber. All the hidden hardware is so nice, perfectly centered, and of course you can't open with one hand. So very nice knife. Um, he's quite famous for, for people mistaking his knives. This guy, this Roland Lanier, um, this is called, uh, what is it called? Uh, not, uh, why so serious based on the, the Joker of the Batman. So yeah, it's, uh, that guy's, uh, quite an artist in his, uh, designs and, um, and what he uses for materials. Um, very cool guy. So this, um, it's a liner lock, as you can see. My only complaint would be that there's no stop pin, so of course you have to carefully close it. You don't want to slam it in there and damage the edge, but stainless steel and all the good stuff you would need in a in a restaurant knife. And so this is dressy and it's a restaurant. I mean, if I take this to a like a steak place, it just fits right in. And you can find his knives in some high-end restaurants around the world. The guy's pretty famous for that. So this knife I absolutely love and it course open l cannot beat it but highly recommend highly recommend the open l as well um don't have to buy like some expensive stuff you know you don't doesn't mean anything doesn't mean someone's better okay uh well kind of theme carbon fiber next best carry all right best carry i used to this i had this knife first which is uh i was going to use this knife which is a um it's a dragonfly it's H1, and uh, you can see it's quite a little bit messed up because it has some corrosion. Yeah, it's, that's the weird thing. It's like usually, it's uh, the H1 is famous for getting corrosion on the laser etching. So I try to like um, rub it out with like uh, like auto saw or whatever, and then it actually ended up kind of ruining the blade finish. But that's okay. But so, dragonfly. I would say the dragonfly is is a knife that. Um, it's a knife that if you were just getting it, if you're just into a simple EDC knife, it's, I think it's a great knife. It's just one knife you need. It has so many different steel options. Action's great, easy to close like this. You can launch off multiple ways. Oops. And the way it's designed, it's like so small, but then you can choke up like this way, right? So amazing. You can still kind of fit a full hand sort of. You can put a little tail on. And um, yeah, nice hollow ground. It slices like a beast. It's super light. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. So this was sort of my uh, my best carry. And my carry is the reason is um, it would be a running knife. Uh, you want to find a reason to, to um, carry a knife um, 
for any reason. So if, when you don't want to carry a knife, this is the knife you carry because it's so light, it just disappears. So there's no excuse not to have a knife with you. And it would be that and H1 is, would be good for any kind of corrosion from sweat or whatever. So that was like my running knife to go when I was running outside and it's kind of slash beach knife or whatever, kind of snorkeling and stuff um, or kayaking, but that's very rare, I think. But that, that knife gets beaten out by this one. And this one is quite um, famous right now. And after you tune it, it's quite a really good knife. Very solid. And then drops like that. You can open it multiple ways. Fidget. All that stuff. Super light. They're almost the same weight, these two. That's a crazy, crazy thing. They're almost the same weight. So what this offered me is a more uh, defensive knife to carry that will disappear in my pants. So this is the knife also that would carry when I, I actually often travel with this knife because I feel less inclined to carry a knife when I travel because I don't know, it's just maybe it's like less of an accessory. I don't want to think about it. So, and I don't mind if I lost this one. So it's, um, yeah, it's sort of my travel knife. It's just the knife that you carry and you don't want to carry a knife. So a, I can't compare between these two. These slices also like a beast. Um, very thin. Very easy to carry. Good deep pocket clip. Um, awesome knife. It, it, if you can find a good... I mean, Benchmade is notorious for some bad uh, fit and finish. And, and uh, this one also had one that I fixed. So I reprofiled and I fixed it. So that is on the top one, top five. Best carry. This one. Okay, next next category would be best dress. And you don't really need this category, but it's more for it is more for for some bling. Cause for guys, what do we have? We don't have so much things to have that is jewelry for us, you know. We can carry a watch, a nice watch. And um what else? I don't know, right? I don't <laughs> so um yeah, some uh, kind of semi-custom or these would be like custom, uh, custom, this is, <laughs> the name is Custom Knife Factory, CKF. If you're aware of them, they're a Russian brand that uses uh, Chinese, they outsource the milling from a Chinese, who knows what, which Chinese uh, manufacturer, it could be Riyadh or We Knife, maybe it's Riyadh, I've suspected it's Riyadh, and so they order the order the parts for them to mill they do all the finishing hand finishing and within their own place their own house and then uh they assemble it and then so it's kind of sort of like a mid-tech it's a mid-tech knife but these are more uh, more onto the custom because they are um using more exotic materials so these are kind of the show off like because you know what when you have like people who look at knives, always like, why do you carry it? Oh my God, why? You know, people freak out. People are either knife people or not. I like, I cannot even give away a knife to non-knife people. I cannot even give them a knife. They don't want to take it. So um, for non-knife people, when they look at full dress and uh, these sort of more exotic materials, actually they sort of can kind of see some kind of interest in it. It grabs their interest, so... Um, I have these two and um, the difference of what I like between, I think I pick this one, which is, um, this one's a CKF. Um, why do I forget the name now? Oh shoot, this is bad. All right, let me start off with this one. All right, CKF Terra. And so this is uh, by uh, that certain designer called Snacks. So I think C uh, CKF is a great collab um, great collab company they do they work with other designers they don't really design their own stuff they work with other designers and basically offer a cheaper alternative to a customs from some very famous and very popular designers so this one's a malaysian designer and he's popular for snacks i think that's how you pronounce it. i don't know he's a malaysian uh designer he's popular for creating a knife that would that would was able to be taken apart he was inspired by um, by a gun being being able to disassemble a gun and uh, i think he's a fan of like chris reeve and all he's a ocd crazy person that we all love and um he has some 
he always goes through Instagram about his like his his logic, his mindset of when he's designing, and it's, and it's quite interesting. So I um, I like that. I like that his uh, communication with the knife community and this kind of stuff. So this is a it's a design and with a his same fashion of uh, being able to take it apart. So um, just flip this open. So there's a couple of ways you can flip it open. You can just like spidey flick it, and then you can thumb flick it, and then. Uh, if it properly broken and you actually can finger flick it this way, I've seen people doing uh, that have done it. Um, I have done it a couple of times, and you can see like me practicing with it. It's like it busted open my finger. It's like, I think my detent's a little bit too um, uh, too new. It needs to break in it a little bit more. But so l let me talk about this design. So you can actually pop out the pin. You don't need any tools to disassemble like this way. See push it like that it's that friction that holds it in so what you do is you take out the clip and the clip is the tool to unscrew the pivot and it's just like that so it's quite awesome that you don't even need a tool to disassemble this thing um I've disassembled a couple of times and um just for fun but um i probably won't in the future but <laughs> yeah some m390 uh tamascus they had different different inlays and um I got I went all up all out with the Timascus one. Yeah. A very interesting design. So it's not only has a like a liner lock, but also has another lock, has two locks, and there's some speculation of why they had this and maybe it was to keep the blade center or, or some other reason. But um I from what I know, I think it's not exactly his original design. It's a sort of collab design with the CKF. So it doesn't drop, but the feeling of it is glass smooth. It feels like glass. And then so great, easy to carry, is beautiful. Um, looks sort of like a race car. Excellent fidget knife because with multiple ways to open and close it. But it goes, uh, okay, now I remember. Good, 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 good. CKF Decepticon 4, which is DCPT. Dash four. I don't think they're like the. They don't want to get sued by Transformers or something like that. So they don't say Decepticon, but you know it's Decepticon. This is the the fourth, I think, iteration, um, which is actually shortest and smallest um, of different kinds, and they're famous for this design. It's just like multiple, uh, just multiple scales like sandwiched in, and it looks like something from an alien ship. Um, so this is a little bit more exotic. You get like the damascus steel. So you have like this kind of beautiful finish and you get the Timascus. So very nice exotic materials and also great action and multiple ways to open it up. You got the flipper and it's a bit stiff, but yep, there you go. Front flipper as well. So you have two different ways to open this up. So fidget. It's a little bit more exotic than this. Um, so I like a little quirky nice, a little bit more exotic. So this one beat it, beat out the Terra. Although the Terra is a quite unique design. This would be my full dress choice. So my five knives here for top five. And here it is. We have the perfect user it's just such amazing design i wish i wish they would do a g10 or i don't care just give me a cts xhp blade i would love it um i know that spada is not going to be the same as that the spada has a different thinner design that can possibly chip it just can't chop like this sucker this sucker it cannot be destroyed so it functions like a fixed blade but can go into your back pocket and all you see is like this sticking out Amazing, amazing design. This is by um, Andrew Demko and the guys over at Cold Steel. Cold Steel make really good knives. As you can notice, I have a couple of Cold Steels out here. Per Cold Steels are the perfect users. They're just not going to have that fit and finish. So, Cold Steel Raja 2, Sabenza, Chris Reeve. Um, I think everyone should probably own one Chris Reeve Sabenza if you can. And it's one of those kind of knives that it's a little bit, uh, it's kind of safe to, to buy. You can buy probably a used one and if you don't like it just resell it you're not going to lose that much money but you might end up liking it between the Sabenza 21 and 25 definitely like the 25 
that ceramic ball insert is what does it for me. If it didn't have that, it wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be here. I, I want the action of that ceramic ball. It's just amazing. And then tight tolerances, um, super functionable. You know, it's, there's uh, people cult, like there's like a cult liking to this uh, knife and the design barely changed over the years and the high, there's a high resale. It's like a Porsche. It's like a Porsche. That's what I, I'm going to compare it to. I don't know what else to compare it to. My food knife here. Roland uh, Lanier, um, his Why So Serious, just absolutely beautiful, minimalistic design for food use. And uh, of course, you can use it for other, other things like uh, EDC. But uh, yeah, so awesome. Love it. Um, and then Best Carry, everyone should own this. You just need to find a good sample. So try to buy it locally or have an online retailer that you trust who can either inspect it for you or they have a good return policy uh, i hate be the, being the guy to tell people to maybe order two or three and just like return the crappy one and keep the best one but maybe you have to do that i don't know um i'm not a fan of like benchmade supposed to have like eh, good warranty i'm not a fan of, of like that kind of style you you send it to them that you get it back in two months or who knows what and if you're overseas then you're you're really effed so yeah and then okay full dress it's just a show off it's only for showing off it's um my ckf um decepticon 4 and uh yeah when i got this i carried it a lot it's um absolutely beautiful knife okay and then so i mean everyone they keep doing their top fives and like there's they're showing like probably like 20 knives and stuff like that i'm guilty myself i'm showing 10 knives and i kind of like showing how i got down maybe i could have just showed you this five but I want to show you my logic of why I picked one over the, over the other. Um, um, I just want to put one more category. <laughs> be that guy because everyone else is being that. And I'm going to put these. Let me shift these over. And then it will be best slicer. And this is almost like a category of best knife. Because I believe a knife it should slice. And then so what I have here is... Um, my cold steel, yay, another cold steel. This ugly sucker looks like a dinosaur penis. <laughs> um, cold steel Colossus, and I have my uh, Spyderco. Why I don't have spy more Spydercos in the top five? Spyderco is a really good company that has like good fit and finish, especially from Taiwan. Ah, Spyderco Caribbean, phenomenal fidget factor and drop action. Ugh. Okay, maybe it needs a little oil in it. There it goes. Phenomenal action. Phenomenal slicer. Great steel. I mean, it almost can be a food knife. This can almost replace this as a more practical knife. Um, for So your marine use, uh, you can use it for food and stuff like that. But just the function of it. Great slicer. This one is also a great slicer. Nothing performs as well as a cold steel colossus. This beast, it is a huge, the the stock thickness is, I think it's, is it a PM2? I don't know. But it's it's not that thick, but you have this huge amount of area that it, it, it goes down to. I think the, I think the, the kind of thickness be, behind the edge is very thin. You can see how the, the grind is like very long. Is I have no idea what the degree angle of this. I'm going to guess it's maybe 15 or something like that. I have no knife that can slice as good as this. Nothing, not a Sebenza, nothing can slice as good as this knife. And I, in the past, I have did a trail clearing. I have opened, I bashed through a trail that was closed up and I went through vegetation and maybe branches, like as not so crazy thick, maybe a couple of inches. And I busted open my, I busted open my hand. I had blisters and stuff like that, but it, it retained its edge. And you have this kind of shape. It's so ugly, but this is designed by a bushcrafter guy. You can have multiple choking up here, just like a raja. It's like kind of like a, a, almost like a raja, a lightweight raja with the better steel. And then you can choke down like this way and get some real powerful chopping action. The weight is not enough. It is not enough for heavy chopping, but you can do some light chopping with it. And the edge, edge retention is phenomenal. The, the 
the edge uh, grind is phenomenal. Linerless, so it's lightweight. Um, this is like, you know, I guess if you think of a knife of what a knife is, these these two should be like, um, I guess your choice. If you want like a, I mean, I, some of these other ones are good slicers, but these perform, I, I feel, above the, above the norm. So, um, and between these two would be the, this uh, Colossus because you have the lock strength of the triad, you have the performance of the blade, this, both the, the shape and the, and the steel they're using, and um, that can run multiple functions. It can like chop, it can do some light chopping, it can slice and stuff like that. And it's great backup field use, and you can, it's light enough because no liner is light enough to EDC, something around like six to seven ounces. It's not that heavy for its size. Um, and you know what's a weird thing is I would say if I had to pick one knife it's not even on the five it would have been this one and it's because I would have to choose a knife that was strictly for function strictly for function that I can see myself bouncing out between EDC and field use I have to have a knife that's a user that has to be, be able to be used and if I had to pick one knife it, for the rest of my life, it actually might be this ugly sucker. It might be this ugly sucker because out of all all of these knives, because just like from what I said, it's um, nothing can slice like it. So it's daily slicing activities, nothing can slice at it. And it's still strong enough to function in the field without breaking. So really, I don't know if this knife is that popular. I really I felt like it should deserve more... Um, more credit than it than it has. Um, I think a lot of people probably don't like the way it looks. <laughs> uh, yeah, strictly function. I want to do a marriage like between these two knives. Come on, man. You know, right? Give me a G10. Give me some G10. Give me that blade steel CTS XHP. You know, that's just wishful thinking. You know, cold steel is all switched to S35. S35 is BS. It is a low retention. <laughs> it's a high impact, low low edge retention. You know, okay, it's a balanced steel, but and it used it used to be a premium steel. It's still a premium steel. It's not a super steel like M three ninety and those other ones. But I I hold S thirty five lower now, so I I think Coastal actually went a little bit backwards, and uh, so snatch up your CTX XHP while you can. So this is my top five, and I think I have talked enough. Is that 32 minutes? Crazy. Top five knives. Right there. These are my top five. And those are the categories I, I said. And if I had to pick one knife, it's none of those five. And it's this Cold Steel Colossus. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.